Gracious God, Heavenly Father, what a joy to be your people gathered together in this place. An opportunity to remember and an opportunity to be thankful to you for the blessings you give. So we pray, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that as we hear your word, as we share that word together, we may grow in our faith, grow in our appreciation of who you are and what you have done for us. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. My dear friends, fellow redeemed saints of the living God, Memorial Weekend is really, I think, a, a time of mixed emotions. It's a time to remember those who gave their lives for the freedoms that we have. It's also a time to give thanks for what we have because of what they did. And sometimes those two things, remembering and the giving of thanks, seem almost to be at odds with one another. It seems to pull our hearts in different directions. Sometimes, instead of remembering, we would like to forget because of the sorrow that that loss brought. But there are, my friends, some things that we need to remember. The National Holiday of Remembrance is really not all that old. Historians remind us that Memorial Day has traditionally been a day to honor U.S. military men and women who gave their lives for their fellow countrymen. And it is good for us to do that. Originally, Memorial Day honored those who died in the Civil War. It was started uh, because some Southern women uh, chose to honor the war dead on May 30th of each year. And so then it became a regular practice to do this. And it then became a regular practice to recite the Gettysburg Address at such occasions. I know in Aurelia every year on Memorial Day, uh, one of the high school students would recite the Gettysburg Address. Two more would get up and recite on Flanders Field, a very moving inspirational service each and every week. Today, flowers and flags uh, are placed on the graves of those who gave their lives, who defended our national freedom. And sadly, of course, because of this ongoing war on terrorism, the number of those that we honor keeps on growing every year. Memorial Day ought to cause us who live in this country to stop and to reflect on the blessings that God himself has passed on to us down through the generations. Blessings that come because men and women have willingly given their lives so that we can have this wonderful blessing of freedom. And I think sometimes we forget just how great these blessings and that blessing of freedom is. I think up, I read someplace that up to 75% of the world, the world's population goes without that blessing of freedom that you and I experience each and every day. Memorial Day reminds us that there are great things for us to remember. In Psalm 33, the writer reminds us of some of these great things that we ought to remember as God's people who live our life in what can only be described as a dual citizenship. That's what Christians have always done. Because we are people of the land. We are citizens of this great nation. But at the same time, we are also the people of God citizens of His kingdom, members of His church. So we are really only pilgrims here on a journey. A journey that will lead us to our real home in heaven. In verse 12 of Psalm 33, the psalmist puts it this way, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom He has chosen as His heritage. This particular verse of this psalm is kind of like the hub of a wheel. It's the central thought around which all of the rest of the psalm is gathered together, all of its verses. And the key thought behind Psalm 33 has to do with God's people learning to trust 
in Him. Trust in Him. Not in their own forces or resources. Not in military leaders. Not in our national defense. But trust in Him. And it's because of this trust in this one God of heaven and earth that we can really spend this time remembering and doing it with thanksgiving in our hearts. Christians view Memorial Day from more than one perspective. It's from people who live here on earth, but also as members of the kingdom of God. As you know, on the coins of our nation, we are proud to display, at least I always thought we were proud to display, what? In God we trust. Perhaps on this memorial weekend, the question should be asked, do we? Do we trust in God? Have we learned in the past 240 plus years to rely on the Lord God of heaven and earth more than on ourselves and more than on our national and natural resources? Have we learned anything about the limits of human brain power, the minuteness of even the most brilliant among us when we compare it to the greatness of our God? Have we perhaps come to rely more on those laser beams, the powers of the jet engine, the speed of the computer, those little things that we sit and play with and talk on every day in our regular activities, do we spend more time and rely on those things more than we rely on God and trust in Him? Have we learned that there is more to remember and count on than these very human things? The psalmist declared long ago, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. False gods have not gone out of style. All of the false gods of our land are not dead. I mean, in fact, even our national pride, our delight and joy in our system of government can become a false god for us if we trust in that more than we trust in God. You see, my friends, the Lord that the psalmist is talking about here is not to be confused with elected or appointed leaders of our country, with victorious generals, with brilliant strategists, political uh, scientists, or any other gifts that God has given to mankind to use. The Lord. The Lord that we are called upon as a nation to remember also in this year, 2019. The Lord is described in Psalm 33. In verse 6, he's described as the one who created the heavens by the breath of his mouth. Describes him as the one who gathered the waters of the sea as if he was putting it into a bottle. Think of the greatness of our God. He was the one who caused all of the earth to stand in awe of his creating, creative power and majesty. Yes, that is the Lord that we are called upon to trust in and to remember. That Lord is the giver of life. He is the giver of the One whose Spirit breathes new life into us. He is the One whose steadfast love is revealed so clearly in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the Lord, my friends, that we are called upon to remember. And to make a memorial to Him day after day and year after year is to be part of a blessed nation and people. You know, there's a lot of things that people remember on Memorial Day. Um, as I look around, there's probably nobody here that was, anybody here that was in World War II? I doubt it. We're, we're getting fewer and fewer of those. So uh, that Battle of Midway or the Battle of the Bulge in Germany, those are things we only read about now. Uh, or maybe a place called Porkchop Hill in Korea. Maybe more vividly we remember 
uh, more here would remember the agony uh, of that war in Vietnam uh, and that war that seemed to go on endlessly for so many. Or maybe today we can still picture in our mind's eye uh, the planes flying and crashing uh, into the World Trade Center. Or we read about the bombings and, and car bombings and suicide bombings in Iraq and Afghanistan and sadly in many parts of the world uh, today. We do need to remember what happened. As a, as a wise old sage once said, if we cannot remember our history, we're doomed to repeat it. So on this memorial weekend, we need to remember. We need to remember the blessings from our God, the ones that He has given to us as a nation through the lives of men and women who have gone before us. We need to remember, we dare never forget. But there is one other battle that we as a people of God gathered together in this place today must never forget. It was fought also on a hill, that hill called Calvary. And that battle makes a difference in all of the rest of our daily battles in our life. It makes a difference in our griefs as we suffer under them and in the joys that we experience in our life. It makes a difference in the brightest of the days that we have and the joy in those days and also the darkest of the nights that we must go through. It makes a difference in all of the temptations that we face and maybe also in the tears that we shed because we failed in overcoming those temptations. It makes a difference in what we remember. It makes a difference in what we rejoice and give thanks about. We need to remember that the steadfast love of God, as the psalmist says in the last verse of the psalm, is really the basis of all of our hope. That tells us that without this event called Calvary, we would not have much of significance to look back on, to look forward to, or even uh, to surround us with comfort and peace on a daily basis. But thanks be to God. That steadfast love of God is seen clearly for us in the fulfillment of the promises of Jesus Christ. The, fulfill the promises of Easter. Think about it. Because He died, we're going to live. Because He lives, we do not have to fear to die. Because He rose from the dead, we have the faith given by God's Holy Spirit that accepts that promise that all who believe in Him shall never die, but shall live forever. That is what we remember on this Memorial Day weekend. It's the basis of our strength and our hope both for the present and for the future. The blessed nation is the nation that knows this God. The God of the Old and New Testament. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. The God of the prophets and of the apostles. The God who is revealed so clearly to us in the person of Jesus Christ our Lord. This God, this Lord, is the one who makes a nation blessed that makes a church blessed, that makes a country blessed, that makes a community blessed. This is the God who blesses us in life and gives us confident hope in death. So today, we raise a memorial of thanksgiving to Him as we remember who He is and what He has done for us. Let me share a couple other verses from Psalm 33. Listen to what the psalmist writes in verses 13 through 17. He says, The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From where he sits enthroned, he looks forth on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord 
is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love. The steadfast love of our Lord seen in Jesus Christ. My dear friends, that is absolutely the greatest remembrance and treasure that you and I can pass on to future generations. To give this assurance, this treasure to our sons and to our daughters is to give them the greatest inheritance that they could possibly have. To make this the hub of our nation is to give us the strength to face our weaknesses. It gives us the hope to face our despairs. And it is the one resource, the one resource, my friends, that will absolutely never fail us. So I invite you on this memorial weekend in childlike faith to look back to the victory that God's Son, the Commander-in-Chief of the Army, called His church, the Holy Christian Church, the victory that He won on Calvary. To look back there and to remember. And then to live thankfully and joyfully in the present and to be confident of the future. This is what God would have each of us do on this memorial weekend. To do this personally and to do this collectively, I believe, is to begin to experience what the psalmist says when he says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. May we remember, may we be richly blessed. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen.